We've answered the question, has crime increased in the U.S. over the course of time? And our line chart showed us that no, it didn't. Um, particularly when we look at the crime rate, which adjusts for the fact that the U.S. population has gotten so much bigger, creating more possibilities for there to be a large number of crimes. Um, crime increased from the 60s up until about the 1980s and 90s, and then we've had a pretty steady decrease after that. So that helps us have some additional context for some of these New York Times and Washington Post stories about um, the rapid increase in uh, violent crimes in particular big cities over the last few years. Um, but that total crime comparison isn't quite the same as those stories about murder or violent crime. And so let's turn to that second question. So did violent crime increase over the course of time? And to understand that, what we need to do is figure out how to visualize this part to whole relationship. So to what extent does um, crimes that are violent crimes compare to the overall amount of crime over the course of time? And to visualize this part-to-whole relationship, one of the default kinds of visualizations that we have is the pie chart. And so this is one of the um, default pie chart options from Excel, and it's using just um, the different kinds of crime that are in the data for 2014. And so each slice of the pie shows the relative amount of um, crime for that given category out of the total number of crimes in the US in 2014. And so if you're matching up um, the colors for the different categories in the legends here to the slices here, then what you're getting is um, the relative share of all crime that was due to that particular kind. So the first thing that jumps out at us is this enormous green slice, which 62% of the total number of crimes in 2014 um, was larceny or theft. And so that's like, you know, somebody stealing your wallet or somebody, um, it's actually like, uh, you know, breaking into a car, anything like that. That's larceny and theft. The next largest one, 18% is a burglary. So burglary is actually breaking into a home or a store when somebody is not there. And so that's 18% of crimes. Yellow is the next largest aggravated assault. So that would be a violent crime. Um, these ones down here are nonviolent. These ones are violent. Uh, motor vehicle theft, 7% right there. Uh, and then we've got a smaller slice is robbery. So that's actually stealing from a person. So if you're home when somebody breaks into your house, that's a robbery instead of a burglary. Um, or like the, if you're holding up a bank or a, a store, that would be a robbery because there's somebody there. Um, rape, 1%. Murder and non-negligent manslaughter um, is the tiny little slice that you actually can't even really see um, very clearly there, and it's such a small proportion of the total amounts of crime that it just gets rounded down to 0%. And so this is um, a way to try to visualize um, what fraction of crimes are violent crimes. Um, but unfortunately, there's a lot of things about this chart that are kind of not ideal. Uh, first, it's using 3D effects. So like we had with the column charts and the bar charts that had this 3D tilt effect, this pie chart also has an unfortunate 3D tilt effect where things in the back of the chart are supposed to look farther away from us. And so they actually look smaller than they should in comparison to things that are in the front of the chart. And when this has the largest slice in the front of the chart and that's coming looking larger than it should so that it has a 3D effect, um, it's artificially shrinking the slices in the back, making them look smaller than they should relative to this enormous slice in the front. The other problem is that the colors are just all over the place. Um, and actually some of them are kind of hard to match up with the categories in this legend here. Uh, and they're just kind of distracting. And the um, categories with relative to where they're placed in this chart also aren't um, visually distinguishing between violent crimes and nonviolent crimes. So murder, non negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, those were all violent crimes. And these are the slices right here for the violent crimes. And then the nonviolent crimes are all around here. But the graph doesn't actually visually portray that in any clear um, or obvious way. Uh, and then finally, one of the limitations is that there's a ton of categories. So if we're trying to understand um, the breakdown of particular kinds of crime, then this would be necessary. But 
if what we want to understand is how much of the total amount of crime in the United States is a violent crime, then that's really the distinction that we want to emphasize is between violent and nonviolent. We don't really need to emphasize the distinction between burglary and larceny or theft. Um, and so there's a lot of limitations, and so we'll walk through how to improve this particular chart step by step, uh, and we'll start with color. And so when we're thinking about color, and there's more information on um, in the textbook that's for uh, the readings for this week, um, there are three components of color to keep in mind. Hue, which is um, the kind of color, so red, blue, yellow, etc. Uh, and then there's saturation, which is the intensity of the color. So is it like a red that really pops or is it um, kind of a very light red? And then there's lightness uh, or brightness, which is shades. So saturation and lightness are, are kind of similar and can be confusing. Saturation is how red is the red that you're trying to use. Uh, and then lightness is, is it a dark red versus a light red? So hue we can understand just using the basic color wheel. So we've got um, our kind of rainbow of colors uh, here in the circle. And then the colors that are across from each other on the circle are, prime, are um, called complementary colors. And so the yellow and purple would be complementary colors. Blue and orange would be complementary colors. Green and red would be complementary colors. And when we're using hues, what we want to do with uh, color is that we want to keep the same hue for the same kind of um, data or the same kind of uh, information. And what we want to avoid is using a ton of different colors for the same kind of information. So if we're just portraying crime rates with different categories, then we don't need to use every color of the rainbow to do that. Um, we want to keep the colors consistent for um, crime. So we want to stick with different kinds of greens or different kinds of blues. And what we want to avoid is using um, complementary colors, just because they visually clash. Um, so a blue and an orange would just really kind of stand out together in a way that isn't kind of visually meshing especially well. Same thing with yellow and purple, um, unless it's a chart about like eggplants or something like that. Um, green and red, unless you're making a visualization about Christmas stuff, I would avoid combining green and red in a visualization. Uh, so instead, what we want to think about is using um, saturation or lightness to help distinguish different kinds of colors. And so saturation is um, visualized here where you're thinking about, if you imagine um, painting, so if you've ever done um, painting where you're mixing colors together, saturation is where you're starting with um, just a plain white paint and then you're progressively adding more and more of a colored dye or a colored paint to it and then increasing the amount of color in that white. So if you're starting with a white and then you're adding more and more drops of red dye, it's going to get um, into a more and more vibrant red the more that you add. Uh, and then lightness is kind of the opposite. So lightness is starting with um, that particular color of um, like red or what have you, and then adding more and more um, of the darker color, more black to it to make it a darker shade. And so lightness is kind of light to shaded. Saturated is from a lack of color to um, vibrant color. Uh, and so then if you combine it, there's another visualization of this uh, in the, the textbook with the reading for this week. Uh, as you go up, it's going from darker to lighter. As you go from the center out, it's going from just kind of the absence of color to a much more um, saturated and vibrant color. And then as you spin around this wheel, um, you're getting different hues. You're going from blue to purple to red to yellow to green, etc. And so let's think about how to um, how to visualize things using color in a way that is going to be effective for various audiences. So not everybody is going to experience color in the same way. So red and green color blindness is really common. So about one out of 10 men have difficulty uh, distinguishing between different shades of red and green. Uh, and then there's a variety of other different kinds of color blindness that are a little bit less common, um, but men are especially um, likely to have color blindness relative to women. Uh, and so we don't want to use combinations of colors that some kind of large segment of the population is going to have trouble distinguishing, like red and green. 
Um, also keep in mind that when you're producing a visualization for an audience that it might be printed um, onto paper and that they might be printing it in black and white. And so if you're using um, two different hues that have the same saturation and the same degree of lightness, um, those two hues might not be distinguishable in black and white when you take away the color. So the same saturation and lightness of something like red and blue might be tough to tell apart. And so let's go back to our unfortunate pie chart and convert it to black and white. And so now it's the same exact chart, um, but we've removed the hues and all we can see are differences in saturation and lightness. Uh, and now in this case, um, burglary and larceny and theft are pretty hard to tell apart. Um, and then this uh, category here, which um, I believe it was robbery, um, is really hard to tell apart from larceny theft because they both look like a very similar shade of gray. Uh, motor vehicle theft looks like it's um, the darkest shade. And when we've got that as the darkest shade, that also looks like we're emphasizing it. Um, it looks like we're trying to call attention to motor vehicle thefts. Um, but if what we're trying to portray is um, the relative fraction of crimes that are violent crimes, um, compared to the total amount of crime, then we're calling attention to a specific category of nonviolent crime, which is not the information that we're trying to convey. Um, and so because that previous chart relied so much on um, hue instead of lightness or um, uh, saturation, uh, the comparison that we wanted to make was kind of completely lost here and, and is actually coming out as something very different than we intended. Uh, and so what we want to think about is um, using shades and grayscale. Um, in case our hues aren't being communicated clearly, then we want to be able to distinguish something when it's converted to black and white. And so we might want to use the same color in a light shade and a dark shade because we know that that's going to stand out whether somebody's colorblind or not, whether it's printed in black and white or color, um, the grayscale ranges are going to be the most effective and consistently interpreted comparisons. So let's look at a couple examples and try to identify um, how color is being used to signal different um, kinds of comparisons. So here we've got um, a visualization of the unemployment rate in the United States. And so if you look at this uh, legend down here in the corner, uh, low unemployment rates are these darker colors, high unemployment rates are these lighter, um, the lighter shades here. And so it looks like there's pretty low unemployment in the middle of the country and it gets um, higher in some areas like on the west coast and then particularly in the south down here. Uh, we can see the visual difference in unemployment rates. So is this a difference in hue, saturation, or lightness? Well, it's not hue because these are all um, kind of the same turquoise-ish colors. If it was a difference of hue, then um, this might be like a red and this would be a blue or something like that. Um, different colors signaling high and low, but it's all the same kind of color. It's all the same kind of turquoise. Uh, is it saturation? So it's not saturation because if that was the case, then what we'd see is a comparison ranging from the absence of a color to kind of a very vibrant color. Um, but if you're looking at the scale down here, that's not actually what we see. What we're seeing is um, it ranging from a very dark to a very light. Uh, and that means that what this chart is using is lightness to convey differences in the levels of unemployment. Uh, what about this particular one though? So what are we using to convey different levels of unemployment in this case? Um, and so this is going to be the question that you'll answer on Canvas for participation points. Is it hue, saturation, or lightness? Uh, and in this case, I think it's pretty obvious. It's not lightness because it's not all of the same kind of color um, ranging from dark to light. It's not saturation. It's not going from the absence of color to the presence of color. Um, it's hue. So low unemployment is this orange. High is this pink right here. And in the middle, we've got a turquoise. Um, and this is a much less effective visualization than the previous one um, because now it looks like these different colors are representing different kinds of things um, instead of an amount of a thing. Uh, and so instead of looking like uh, immediately 
intuitively understanding that it's going from a, a low of something to a high of something. Um, that same thing, which is unemployment, it looks like you've got something happening over here and then something very different happening over here in, in terms of a quality. Um, and so the saturation visualization was, or I'm sorry, the lightness visualization was uh, a much more effective way to do that. Uh, and so to recap some of these rules for using color, avoid using different hues to represent the same data. Use a darker shade to direct attention. So that unfortunate pie chart was calling a lot of attention to the motor vehicle thefts, which wasn't what we wanted. Uh, and so we can use a darker shade to direct the attention how we actually do want. Um, use the same color palette and stick to it. So often when we're um, putting together a write-up, like in the Try It exercise for this past week, you produced several charts. You didn't just have one. Um, use the same kind of consistent color palette. So in this one, if I'm using blues um, and I'm ranging from dark to light blues, then I want all of my charts to stick with blue and range from dark to light. I don't want one to go from dark to light blue and then another to go from dark to light green. Um, that's just confusing for the reader. Uh, and then keep in mind that some colors have kind of a cultural meaning to them. And so if you're using a line chart to represent some kind of a sales data, um, then in accounting, black would be growth and red would be losses. And so if you're visualizing an increase in sales, but you do it with a red line, um, that might communicate to the reader that you're actually losing money when you're trying to convey the opposite. Um, in the United States, at least, um, pink and blue convey uh, gender kind of norms, where um, pink is thought of as a feminine color, blue not so much, um, thought of as a, a masculine color, which is something that's really only been true for about the last 60 years. Um, so it's kind of in the grand historical scheme, um, kind of a recent thing. But if you're doing a gender comparison um, in a chart and you're labeling the chart for men pink and the chart for women blue or something like that, or, or if it has nothing to do with gender and you're labeling one pink and one blue, readers might make an association with gender when that's not the comparison that you want to convey. All right, so uh, for participation points on Canvas, when you're choosing a color for your graph, um, what should you avoid? Should you avoid using gradients of the same color? Should you avoid using colors on the same side of the color wheel? Um, should you avoid using color to emphasize important data? Or should you avoid using different colors to represent the same kind of data? Uh, what you should avoid using is different colors to represent the same kind of data, that last part. That was like the, the map where you had the orange and the pink and the purple and whatever all of which representing different levels of unemployment. It was just distracting and confusing. All of the other ones are things that you should actually do. So let's return to uh, our pie chart and let's try to understand how we might have potentially improved that chart. So now what we've got here is um, a pie chart that's all in the same color scheme and it's using different shades of blue. So we don't have all of these different distracting colors. And if I were to convert this chart into black and white, I would still be able to distinguish all of these categories. I've eliminated the 3D effect, and so it's no longer tilted in such a way that the slices that are um, at the bottom that are supposed to look close to me seem visually larger, and the ones in the back are distorted to look smaller. Um, and I've uh, rearranged the slices so that it's going from large to small. And in that same arrangement, now what we've got is we've got violent crime, or I'm sorry, we've got non-violent crimes um, here. This is the, the large larceny and theft category, and then it's getting smaller and smaller. And then um, when we cross uh, into these categories, we've got the violent crimes here. And so now we've got aggravated assault, um, robbery, rape, and murder, and manslaughter. What if I wanted to improve this chart even further? So I fixed a lot of the problems, but not all of them. What would I do? Well, one thing that we didn't fix was the fact that this wasn't a clear um, communication of what kinds of crime are violent and what kinds of crime are nonviolent. And so this particular visualization asks our reader to understand which are violent crimes, which are nonviolent crimes, and then they have to visually add up the slices for the violent crimes. And um, the other thing that this doesn't do is use um, lightness uh, to signal which kind of category we want people to focus in on. 
And so if I wanted to fix those things, I would just remove the extraneous data. Uh, I would combine all of the violent crimes together into a single slice, and I would combine all of the property crimes together into a single slice. And then I would use a darker color um, to, signal, to signal the violent crimes. Uh, and then that particular slice, that 12%, really stands out from the rest of it. And so this would be the way to most effectively communicate that with a pie chart. Next, what we'll talk about is the ways in which a pie chart isn't always the best um, way to communicate a part-to-whole relationship. In fact, pretty much any time you want to use a pie chart, there's a better visualization for that comparison, and we're going to talk about why that is.